Hello right, bags, it's Jade with another PTS Grounded Guide. This should be going live for everyone in the next couple of weeks and things may change, but right now this is the way that you unlock the molar scanner to help you get more upgrades, as well as a golden molar and a normal one to help you get some upgrades too. Now if you haven't caught the news already, these molars are how you can basically give your character some stats, either increase his stamina, reduce the food and water you need, or being able to increase your stack sizes, which they've changed as well. So you are going to need some tools. You're going to need pretty much a tier 2 shovel, which is the black ant shovel. You're also going to need splatwurst. You're also going to need a tier 2 underwater knife, which is the bone knife. And you are going to need the tier 2 hammer if you want to get some pink gum. But first things first, there is a brand new shovel. And conveniently, it's called leaning shovel. And it's propped up by one of the new bricks or stones or pebbles that you need to blow up with a bomb. Now, it can be a splat hurst. It can also be just a regular bomb. You may even be able to lure, if you're really, really quick, maybe a infected ladybug or even a weevil or something like that all the way over here from the haze it's not that far that might be something i might have to test in the future but for now here we are we're going to throw it and see if this works all right shadow i don't know why i said it like that i know it works because i recorded this earlier and it worked it blows it up and look what happens i honest to god thought it was going to squish me there i thought it was a horrible prank the grounded devs obsidian the played and i was about to become brown bread and that's it you can just simply run up the spade but wait before you do that, there's something else you need to do. Don't go up onto the picnic table just yet. We're going to go and get the special key. If you actually take a look from the picnic table, you can see there is a pipe below us. And we're going to go there because there's something in there you need to get. Now, you should know there's a lot of these sewer pipes now running. It's particularly near the haze where you can traverse them, but they're filled with water. Whereas this one, you will have to dive in the water a little bit. And you will also need a diving knife. As it does look like you're going to need a bone knife. So that way, there's nothing there. Don't bother wasting your two seconds of your life running down because there's nothing here. But in the future, it looks like these pipes possibly may join up with others that go down to the haze and access to some of their laboratories. Instead, go the other way. Keep running along and eventually you'll come to another break in the pipe. And this little break in the pipe has got the water in it. So you won't necessarily need any oxygen items. You can pretty much swim in here. You should be able to see without worrying too much about light either. And you've got some soggy roots. And this is what you need to hack away with your tier 2 blade. It does have to be the underwater one. You can't just use any other blade in here. It has to be the underwater one that you lock with the sunken bones, which you can also sometimes find sunken bones in the sandbox, FYI, hidden away as long as you dig them up with a shovel. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going to come to that in another video. Go ahead and start hacking away at the soggy roots. And then you can get the key that is literally waiting on the floor. That is the Minotaur Maze Key. Back to obviously the shovel, climb above, obviously being careful for some of the bees. They did, did seem pretty docile though, so they weren't necessarily going to aggro me that quickly. And you can see we've got a bunch of foodstuffs. It is worth maybe exploring a little bit. You'll find plenty of crow feathers. Crow feathers are absolutely everywhere now in the game. Definitely in the haze environment as well, you'll find them in the trenches. There is something in this yellow box that we're also going to get, so wait until the very end. Don't jump off the table or go anywhere else. Make sure you jump in that yellow cooler box because there is a normal molar in there which you can still upgrade a bunch of stuff like increasing your stamina or reducing your food or water you also notice there is some gum up there i've got a video showing you guys how to get all the brand new resources so don't worry about that one too much just yet but the idea is that you do use a shovel so you might have to build a big platform to get up there we're going to run around this plate i'm going to show you exactly everything you need to do just in case you do get a bit lost and you can see we've got a nice view lots of black ants are up here as well but nothing too aggressive there's no big bad guys and then there's no scabs that i come across although my scab thing wasn't necessarily working i wasn't getting any beeps at all that there were any scabs next to me and there's the bubble gum which you will have to build up a little platform to get hold of as far as i know right now there's no other way to get it loose unless you use a shovel but i will be doing some more testing uh, Click onto this little plastic fork, jump onto the side of the picnic bench and make your way towards the end. There is a thin little nail that you will be able to climb and jump up on top of and we are nearly there to get ourselves some extra good loot. Again, don't panic. There's no enemies up here as far as I could tell. The only thing you've got to make sure is that you just don't drop off. So make sure you've either got one of the uh, the fluffs. Like I nearly landed in the gap there because I am some sort of blonker. Uh, climb up the books. You can look around. There is a pair of sunglasses or reading glasses, but they don't seem to do anything. I was kind of hoping there'd be some sort of Easter egg when you look through them, but it doesn't change the look or anything. Let's go ahead and carry on climbing the books. And when you get to this point, you're going to need to press the red button. Now, I wasn't paying too much attention. I was like, how am I meant to get up here? Where am I meant to go? 
I can't get up here. This is ridiculous. This game is broken. Rubbish devs. How dare they release this? And of course, it was me being stupid because I hadn't pressed the big red button. It's clearly right there in front of me. Um, you will need a tier two hammer for this as well. I totally started this video off saying that you only needed a splat burst, but I'm going to correct that and make sure I list all the tools. So yeah, welcome to my future past self as I talk more after this, as I'm just killing some time while we get to the top of the ping table. Hey, we're finally up. There's some food pieces, there's some water, so if you do need some sustenance, you go ahead and grab it. I do find there's a lot more just scattered all around now as well. You will always find a little few morsels. And of course, there is a big stinking hot dog here as well, which you can cut up. Actually, I don't think it's a stinking one, it's a nice one. And there's a crow here too, sitting on top of the uh, water jug thing, majig. So he'll drop some more feathers if you need it. And then this is the best bit, the actual Minotaur maze. You see underneath the bookcase there is also an analyzer station so you go there and analyze anything you might have picked up already on the journeys and there should be some bandages or at least something like that there. And then as I mentioned don't jump down there yet, wait until you've finished but you can see there is a molar, a milk molar down there. So you should be able to land just about perfectly on top of the white spoon without taking too much damage or maybe aim for the yellow lid and get down that way as a bit of a safer way. But we're not going to do that, we're going to go through the maze. Now you can actually build all in and around this maze as well. It doesn't connect to the walls, they are slightly bigger than the mushroom build pieces that you know, but you should be able to work your way around. It's not the most complicated maze either, there are a few dead ends that you have to worry about, but these guys are great. If we ever get any enemies that look like that just lumbering around, that would scare the bejeebas out of me. So eventually you'll make it, oh there's some more of the bubblegum here as well. I'm definitely going to do that as like the best places to get bubblegum. So absolutely, you need the shovel as well. I'm guessing I'm going to really have to correct this video at the start now and say you're going to need at least four tools to make this super easy guide to get up to the picnic table and get loads of stuff. I mean, you might not necessarily want to get all these resources. I only got one bit of gum there. That was pretty stingy. Anywho, if you have any particular trouble, you can jump on top of the walls like I mentioned and you will be able to get in here and open it up with the key. But as I said, just to show you guys, if you really have any trouble getting through, you can get on top. Break the chest open and you'll get yourself a gold milk morsel. And this is, uh, I keep calling them molars. I am getting these mega milk morsel. I've probably said that wrong about four times. They really love tongue twisters. You can see you've got a burgle chip. And that's what's going to unlock the molar scanner as well as a bunch of new pictures. I guess it's worth pointing out that it's a good idea to bring some silk with you as well. So you can finish off the, obviously, zip line going all the way down to the sandbox. And there may be some scabs or maybe science points scattered around up here as well. But for some reason, they weren't alerting to me to them and the scab scanner wasn't actually working. And when you're in creative mode, it doesn't show any of the science points. And that is pretty much it. Just jump down into the yellow container to go and get the nice new mint one. And we're nearly done. We'll just break this open and then we've got to make our way back to Burgle so I can show you guys how to upgrade if you haven't seen it already. And also reveal the price of the Mola scanner. It's, a, it's an expensive one. So hand over the Burgle chip. It's the picnic one. And you will unlock the signs, the picnic food signs, as well as I said, the scanner. Now it is five thousand science points to get the milk Mola scanner. And you can see the signs are a bit cheaper. Not by much though, 4,000 science points. This is this is mad. Now, did you know how many molars there are available in the game? Well, I'm gonna tell you a quick little brief tutorial that I might have already done in a separate video, but I'm gonna chuck it on the end here, just in case you're new to it all. Then molars we've been collecting, you can go ahead and get upgrades from Burgle. So the milk molars are the blue ones that you find, and you can see there's five categories. Increasing your max health, your stamina, reducing your thirst, reducing your hunger, or increasing how many mutations you've got. Then you've got the group ones. Now these still benefit you, but they also benefit people that come and join. You'll all get max arrow stack increase, you'll all get extra consumable stack increase, and you'll also get extra resource stack increase. So the max active mutations, you can actually increase that up to five now from three. But obviously you start off at two, so it's going to cost you three points just to increase it so you can have three mutations again. Then it's going to be four points to hold four mutations and then five points to hold five mutations. The rest of the stats, they increase by one, two, three, four, five. So to increase your max stamina completely, all five uh, upgrades, you're going to need 15 of the milk molars. And to complete all of this, you're going to need 72 milk molars. 
There's no way to reset them. The devs haven't said they're going to add it just yet. This is something that they want you to get good and get better at, and you can upgrade to your max character status. But yeah, 72 milk molars, which I presume are all scattered throughout the yard. And the golden ones, well, obviously you need the golden molars to actually upgrade. So that's going to be 45 of them that you're also going to need to find. Obviously, each one of these you can upgrade up to five times. And it costs 15 of the golden group molars to basically get that full upgrade. So yeah, 45 in total if you want to get all max upgrades for these too. Now, I've done a big session ever since the PTS went live. I must have spent about three hours running around the trash area, the picnic bench, the sandbox, as well as some of the underground labs with the black ant colony. And I only managed to pick up six golden molars. So yeah, it's going to be a real grind getting all of them. The blue ones were a little bit easier to find, but not by much. You can see I've only got about eight here. I promise you, I was looking absolutely everywhere for these molars when I was searching around. So you can see they do increase the stats. The max health, we're going to increase it by 20, the stamina by 20, the first burn rate, reducing it by 80, as well as hunger. And then, of course, yeah, you can get up to five active mutations now when you upgrade completely that one. And you can see for the group ones, we can increase it up to 23, then 26, then 29 arrows if we have enough. And it goes pretty much upwards in freeze for the resource stack size. So eventually, you should be able to maybe have 24 stack size. For the resources, that's how much you can increase it by max upgrading. And for the consumable stacks, it's going to be 20. You'll be able to upgrade to a maximum consumable stack size of 20. So quite some big changes going on there. I don't know if everyone's going to appreciate it, but there you go. And my last constructive criticism. The devs have got to be less stingy with the pictures. I've just spent 4,000 science points and I'm only getting maybe three pictures out of it. The first set I'm looking at here are Glow. They come from another chip, which I'm going to be showing you guys, or I've already shown you guys how to get. And then the food ones, yeah, there's only like three pictures. As far as I can tell, the rest are usually the ones that are always there. So yeah, I kind of want them to increase how many we get. Don't be stingy, devs. Give us some more pictures, will ya? It may not be that important to people just spending their leftovers because they've got everything else. But yeah, it's still I still say it's pretty expensive for what you get. If you found this useful, go and check out the rest of my guides, my tutorials and my content on Grounded. And as always, the home of survival games, news, guides and opinion. And I'll see you at bags later.